Thank you, Dr. Alka. Come, I'll just make a comment. Because we are running, running short, short of time, time I will... will... Very much. I'm so happy to see so many people post-lunch interested in remission. no diabetes medications for a period of at least three months okay so that is the definition of remission what evidence do we have regarding remission and here I'm going to point out this has been going on for some time now uh, the counterpoint study was the first one this is Roy Taylor's group from the UK they've done a lot of work on this and the first question they asked first of all is is it possible can remission of diabetes happen? So they studied 11 people, okay, with diabetes. They took some controls also. And they did an in-detail study. So the first thing they did is put them on a 600-calorie liquid diet, okay? All of you just finished lunch. I'm kind of guessing that <laughs> you've had like a 1,000-calorie lunch maybe, okay? So that's one meal. And people are going to be eating something close to 2,000, 2,500, maybe even 3,000 calories a day. And now put that in perspective and look at 600 calories in a day. That's hardly anything. So it, they went on to this liquid diet and then they looked at so many different parameters. They looked at hepatic glucose output, insulin sensitivity, fat content in the liver and in the pancreas, etc. And this is what they found. So first panel here shows you fasting glucose. Look at this. And they did this for a period of eight weeks, right? So in first week, you'll see that the sugar came zooming down, stayed down. That's the yellow. Almost near the controls shown in red. Now look at the liver. What happened here? Fat percentage came down first week, second week, and stayed nicely down even before, uh, even below controls. Similar in the pancreas, fat content came down, insulin sensitivity went up beautifully, almost up to normal levels. So the question they asked, can it be done? Yes, it can be done. Okay, they reversed it by reversing the fat in the body. Then came the next study, which was the counterbalance study by the same group. What did they do here? They divided people with diabetes into two time periods of duration. One is long duration, which is more than eight years, and then shorter duration, less than four years. So two groups of people, they did the same thing, that 600, 800 calorie liquid diet for eight weeks. Then they went into a maintenance phase for six months, but again in the same calorie diet. May have been solid, but it stays low, very, very low calorie. What results did they find? So this is what it is. This is weight loss, okay? Those with short duration diabetes, zooming down, beautiful. Long duration diabetes, zooming down. So if you take an 800 kilocalorie diet, your weight's going to come down. Perfect. Now what about glucose and remission? Now those with short duration diabetes came down. Very nice, remission is happening. But for those with long duration diabetes, you have three types of people as shown by the three dotted white lines here. The first group of people came down, similar to short duration, stayed down. The second group of people came down but slowly, you can see that chugging along there, not really moving, slowly, steadily. And then there's a group of people, no matter what they did, would not, the glucose would not come down. Okay, so there were three groups of people, responders versus non-responders on this very low calorie diet. Then came the direct trial, 
larger study done in the US, 300 people done for two years. Similar thing, go on to very low calorie diet, look at maintenance and see what happens. So primarily, okay, there are two bars here. The one on top, this tells you the amount of weight loss and the amount of remission. But that's not the important one. Look at the one below. This is the one that says that the amount of remission is directly proportional to the amount of weight loss. So more weight loss, more remission. And how much did you need to lose weight? You needed to lose 10 to 15 kilos in order for the remission to happen. And if you did that, if you lost like 10 to 15 kilos, 57% remitted, even then it's only one in two, by the way. And if you lost more than that, about 86% people remitted. And some of them were able to continue over the two-year period. A lot of people started re-remitting, which is going back to having high glucose. So here they said in this trial that it's possible, yes, not easy to do can be done with a lot of weight loss, minimum 10 kilos weight loss, and we have data up to about two years. Okay, so that's where we are. So what do we have? We have this idea that remission is possible in a group of people, mostly with shorter duration, huge weight loss, but we don't know too much about the long-term effect. Now let's come to India. Okay, and if I told all the people in this audience, go on to an 800 calorie liquid diet, you're not going to get diabetes. What would you say? No. Maybe. You don't want to remit diabetes. Don't want. But you have to have that liquid thing only, three times a day, every day, for the rest of your life. You'll come and slap me here. That's what you'll do. Okay? So there are cultural issues in our population. Not many people are able to go on to this kind of Western meal choice with bars and liquid and all that. And we need data that will work in a larger population like our country. There's no population accepted guideline of diet for us to be able to know, can we do something about diet and diabetes? We looked at various national surveys. So I've shown here data from NSSO, NFHS, NNMB. These are all the national surveys in India that have nutrition data in them. We didn't really find anything. And thus we went to the ICMR INDIAB study. Now this is a study funded by the Indian Council of Medical Research and the Department of Health Research, Government of India. What does the study do? It looks at the burden of diabetes and all metabolic NCDs, hypertension, obesity, dyslipidemia, etc. in the whole country. In this we also have data on risk factors like diet and physical activity. So this is the diet component and the question we asked is that can we provide optimal macronutrient recommendation for remission and prevention of type 2 diabetes in Asian Indian adults at a population level. So this is the study design, okay? We have more than one lakh patients inside of the India study, INDIAB study where we have all of this data. In this, we had diet details. So we have FFQs. These are very detailed kind of questionnaires on diet. In one in five participants, so that's 22,000 people, we had to remove all those with known diabetes, energy outliers, etc. And finally, we analyzed data for 18,000, almost 19,000 individuals that I'll be talking about. So the urban-rural split is, you know, 70-30, uh, the sex ratio was also equal. Of course, the 70-30 is the population census of India looks like that as well. Now, what did we do here? Now, this is called, uh, this is a modeling process that is called optimization. I'm going to give a disclaimer here. I'm neither a statistician or a mathematician. I'm a very simple diabetologist here. So I, I don't really understand all of it that works, but I'll tell you in principle what they have done. So they first did linear regression. Okay, in three categories. Remember you have now three categories of people. One is with newly detected diabetes. So newly detected diabetes trying to remit or revert less than 6.5 definition. Okay, then you have a category of people with pre-diabetes. Pre-diabetes going all the way back to normal. A1C less than 5.6. Now pre-diabetes can also progress. Remember, so you have two remission categories. Diabetes reverting and pre-diabetes reverting. That is remission, two categories. Then you have two progression categories. Normal going forward, pre-diabetes going forward. Okay, so that's four categories of people. And in all these four people, what kind of recommendation? So they have a regression equation there where all non-dietary factors are accounted for. And only dietary factors are moved. So the question they ask is, 
what combination of macronutrients will push most of the population to an A1C of less than 6.5? What is that optimal quadratic equation that will give you that? And that is what has been done in each of the glycemic categories. You do it by urban and rural, do it by sex, activity, BMI, age, etc. So that's how it's been done. And these are the recommendations. So the first column gives you, so there's only like four here. Carb, protein, fat, and fiber. These four are the macronutrients that we're talking about. The current intakes of the population are the first column. So most of anything that the Asian Indian eats, 60% above, is always carbohydrate. Protein is low at 12%, fat is at 25%, and fiber is also low at 3.5%. This is what is usually taken. Now, what should we do for remission in a newly detected, so diabetes remission, okay? You have to go down from 49 to 54, okay? So almost uh, somewhere around 50% to remember easily. So you're at 60% and above, you need to move it down to 50%. That is for carbohydrate. Protein, protein is about 10, 12%. Remember, needs to go to 20. Straight away, all the way up to 20. Fat, fat is okay in our population. About 25% is okay for us. Fiber needs doubling, go up to 6%. Okay, and this combination will help in the remission of about 78% of people with new onset diabetes in this country. Now for pre-diabetes, it's somewhere in the same range, slightly more lax. We said for diabetes, carbohydrate 50, pre-diabetes 55. That's a little more relaxation. Protein is same, fat is same, fiber also to about 5% is where you need to go. So these are the macronutrient recommendations. Uh, I forgot to say this paper is just accepted in diabetes care a couple of weeks ago, should be out. It's, it's so fresh from press, it's not even out in the online, should be out in a couple of weeks. Right, so in urban rural areas, is there difference depending on activity levels? Yes, there are differences, but the differences are minor. What does this tell us? If you live in a rural area, there's a slightly higher increase allowance in carb, protein, fat, says, and fiber stays the same. Activity, if you're an active person, up to 58% carb you can take, but if you're inactive, just like everybody else, you're stuck at 50%. Uh, the others remain kind of the same. Now, uh, so these are the changes for the urban, rural, and activity. Now, what about for men and women? Uh, men, slightly 2% more carb than women is allowed. And similarly, if you're younger compared to 65 plus, you have a little bit more carb allowance. Now, this is very personalized depending on the age, activity, etc. Similarly, if you are normal BMI, you can go up to 54% carb, whereas if you're overweight or obese, you have to stay to the lo lower limit, 49, 50% is safer. These are diabetes NDD remission. Now let's look for pre-diabetes remission, also very, very similar, not very different. I told you the allowance was slightly higher. Again, rural areas, it's higher. In active people, it's higher. In men, it's higher. Younger individuals, it's higher. And if you have a normal BMI, it's a little higher. So the principles remain the same. Now let's look at the last part, which is the prevention of progression. Now here again, two categories, those with normoglycemia, those with prediabetes. So the first one here is for prediabetes. That's this one. This is prediabetes. What does it say? Carbohydrates up to 57%. Now this is, remember, progression, not remission. 57%. Whereas if you're normal, up to 60% is allowed. Fat, protein is the key here. Protein is always around 20%, okay? And fats are at 20, 24%, and fiber is at 6%. So it's pretty similar. You may ask me, ma'am, what is this 1%, 2%? Does it actually make a difference? Now, when you look at an individual person, the 1%, even there it's important. But when you look at a population of 1 billion, now you put 1% into context, and you will see the effect size moving crazily in terms of how it is giving you outcomes. 
okay? So that's my talk. I'd like to conclude by saying that we're doing population-based approaches for remission and prevention for the first time in the world. We had a crazy amount of time getting this done. We took two years to get this paper out. Uh, we, the recommendation is in India, reduction in carbohydrate calories and increase in the protein. Protein up to 20, carbohydrate up to 50, just to remember it uh, easily. If you are physically inactive, obese, older, and especially if you live in urban areas, then you require lesser carbohydrate as compared to the opposite. That's it. Thank you.